next five years on a part-time basis, I essentially built that business to where it had like tripled my take-home pay from my consulting job all on the side. I was able to come home, be really a work from home dad. It, you know, really started to multiply so many people that were um, building that. Um, and then over the next 10 years, uh, actually 11 years, worked with that company to continue to grow it. The company grew to almost a billion dollar um, annual revenue company. And but what I learned is, you know, even though I was branded with a certain company, they couldn't take my skills, my influence, my network, all the things that I had developed along the way were not tied mm. to necessarily that company. And if I could wow. partner again with something that matched my values, that had an incredible offer that really were about other people, then I could plug and play and bring all those skills into that. And that's what we did over the last now almost five years. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of Own the Exit. We're absolutely thrilled to be with you today. And we've got an unbelievable guest. I'm here in the studio with our co-host, Aaron. What's up, Aaron? How's it going, everybody? Glad for another episode with you guys. Yeah, so I'm really excited about the guests that we have. Over the last year, year and a half, I've had the privilege to get to know Wayne Johnson. Wayne mm -hmm. built a half a billion dollar revenue company in the health and fitness uh sector. And uh, because of completely uncontrollable factors outside of his control that he essentially lost that entire company overnight and went from half a billion revenue to nothing had to restart. And, uh, you know, through resilience has now built another uh, nearly half a billion dollar revenue organization in the health and fitness and wellness industry. And so this is a guy who's responsible for building teams that are that are uh, producing almost a billion dollars in mm -hmm. sales and revenue. This is an unbelievable accomplishment, but it didn't start out that way. And we're excited to get to know and kind of hear the story of and find out how we can learn from uh, Wayne the Train. Wayne Johnson. the Train. Wayne the Train. What's up, Wayne? Thanks for joining us on Own the Exit. Yeah, fellas. Thanks so much. Just honored to be here. And, uh, you know, anytime that I can add value, share my story, honestly, share the things that I've learned along the way in the journey. And uh, by no means have I arrived, you guys. I, I think, uh, you know, one of the things about me is I have eight kids now. I don't, don't, I know how that happens, but it's unbelievable to think how that happens. So, you know, when you got eight kids, you're, you're learning things every day. Every kid is unique. And so mm -hmm. a lot of my business skills have been able to apply to parenting and fatherhood as well. But, um, yeah, so just, you know, take you back, kind of give you a little recap of who who was Wayne and, you know, how have I gotten to this place in life of building these businesses, building these organizations and, you know, really just a desire to impact people everywhere I go and pay it forward that way. But, um, you know, I grew up, uh, I was born in Los Angeles. My family moved to Seattle, Washington when I was 10 years old. I was a kid around, you know, I was 10. So I had to, uh, I had to go with them, I had to leave the beaches of uh, California up to Seattle, yeah. Washington, the <laughs> yeah. rainy state. Um, but um, grew up there, uh, you know, went to college at University of Washington, got a business degree. And, you know, and here's here's something that, you know, I've identified, you know, 30 years later is, you know, we we tend to only do things that we've seen or experienced or, you know, heard. And so my dad was in tech. Uh, my dad also, my parents actually built real estate, did stuff on the side. So I kind of grew up in this entrepreneurial family and my and my dad even said, hey, you know, go get a good job, but that's going to pay the bills. But, you know, you want to you want to build something on the side and that's really your future. So wow. thankfully, I kind of had these seeds planted in me that I took forward as I started uh, in my career. I, I started an IT consulting uh, practice right away. I actually uh, I may not look like it, but um, I actually started programming computers before year 2000. And so wow. I, I actually had uh, the opportunity to write when the whole fear of Y2K when the world was going to shut down and the Terminators were going to come and you know, all this stuff. <laughs> um, I actually was as a 23 to 25 year old making about $45 an hour reprogramming mainframe computers. And I actually was recruiting and building a team to go do that work. So early on, I was able to cast vision, recruit people, put people into positions to do this. And um, so it just kind of was part of me. And the, after that Y2K, um, you know, just another divergent thing in that, in that youth, I, I didn't really know how to, 
um, manage my money well, though. One thing I did is I bought a house with that money, but I also mm. invested a lot in the market. If anyone's old enough to remember what happened in 2001, there was a huge tech crash, and I was hev heavily invested in that wrongly. I right. learned about margin the wrong way, all that stuff. So, But it was a huge blessing, right? Every Everything we learn or mistakes we make, it's always about a fail forward. And so what I learned from that was to like, change how I was doing my investments, change how I was doing. And, and honestly, I probably would not have looked at the next opportunity that came my way had I not had that happen to me because, mm -hmm. you know, I went from having like, you know, I was like a 25 year old with like half a million dollars of assets in the market that went down to like 50,000. So I was like, I'm a genius to like, I have no money. What's going on here? But I had my <laughs> tech skills. I had all these skills that I had. And so in 2003, I actually found a direct sales company um, it was in health and fitness. And, you know, it kind of just fit that same vibe that I had. Of, I was like, wow, this is an incredible offer. These products are incredible. I love being able to teach other people how to, you know, go on a journey, get healthy, but also how to build income and do that. And so the next five years on a part time basis, I essentially built that business to where it had like tripled my take home pay from my consulting job all on the side. I was able right. to come home be really a work from home dad. It you know, really started to multiply so many people that were um, building that. Um, and then over the next 10 years, uh, actually 11 years, worked with that company to continue to grow. And it, the company grew to almost a billion dollar um, annual revenue company. And like Caleb said, in 2019, we had the opportunity to have that company really go away. <laughs> and so, so that wow. was, you know, there was a whole other story behind that. But what I learned is, you know, even though I was branded with a certain company, they couldn't take my skills, my influence, my network, all the things that I had developed along the way were not tied mm. to necessarily that company. And if I could wow. partner again with something that matched my values, that had an incredible offer that really were about other people, then I could plug and play and bring all those skills into that. And that's what we did over the last now almost five years with a new company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been an incredible, incredible journey. But you know, just like every company, there's obstacles, there's things you have to work through, there's pivots, you know, COVID, all, all those things. But you know, the one thing I've learned in this long journey is, um, you know, you continue to grow, you continue to uh, move forward, you continue to have the right people around you, you, you work with through your values and, and great things that have happened. And, yeah. you know, and then in the last, you know, couple of years, develop this real estate fund, really going back to the root of what I grew up with of seeing real estate be mm -hmm. this like pinnacle, um, you know, exit strategy or freedom strategy for people as they're making money. And so develop the fund and, you know, been working with you guys. And so that's kind of where, yeah. where I'm at now on the business professional side is uh, still building this, you know, organization, helping people, but also, you know, building the ability to help other people come into real estate and, um, exit and really my fund is called exodus legacy legacy trust where i just want to help people mm -hmm. um exodus financially in a whole different way than's really being taught out there you know a lot of yeah. things are about scarcity a lot of things are about save all this money and then drain your account in retirement and it's like why do we have yeah. to drain our account why can't we build something that can continue to pay us and create a legacy for our family so you yeah, know all the things that you guys awesome. talk about why we're so aligned yeah, no, absolutely. I'd love to 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 kind of back up to the moment that you pivoted from kind of the the consulting tech consulting, whether that was W two or contract work, that into you know you 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 were working that building and and you know my one of my business mentors we featured him on this show uh, a couple months ago a guy named Michael Crowder he uh, early on probably my I don't know I was eighteen or nineteen years old you know, he said something very similar to what you said, uh, you know, and that's work full time on your job and part time on your fortune. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's kind of how you got started, right? As you were, you were working full time in, in, in tech consulting. And then you saw this other opportunity, this chance to really be able to grow an organization and a business in the direct sales space in something that you were passionate about health and fitness and wellness. Um, how did you, I guess, make the pivot from, you know, cause a lot of people, 
they'd be afraid to exit that kind of cushy tech job, right. And go all yeah. in yeah. on, yeah. on the, uh, you know, on like, we're going to, we're going to trust that we can continue to scale and build this business. So, you know, tell, talk to us a little bit about how you made that decision to kind of exit the, the corporate tech space and go all in on, uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And that, you know, this is a great question. I hope people really catch this because what one, one thing I'm seeing today is people are exiting the plan A too soon. People are taking a leap and they're putting all their eggs in, you know, this, you know, sometimes a rickety basket or something that really needs to be developed further. And, you know, mm -hmm. so one of the things, thankfully, mentors of mine and, you know, the founder of the company that I was working with, they were like, hey, you got to give this a five year commitment. You got to, um, you know, you need to be making like two or three times your day job from this business, have it be stable for six months, have savings before you even think of doing this full time. And, you know, and so that, mm -hmm. you know, that for me, that was always ingrained. And, they, you know, I came from a, a fairly conservative, I would say, you know, fiscally conservative family that, you know, lived below our means. We were, we always valued experience over a lot of stuff. And, you know, we yeah. didn't have like the biggest, best house or anything, but we had a, a house that was built on great foundation of, you know, love and the right values and things like that. So I, I kind of had that rootedness where even though I saw people chasing trinkets and people getting new cars and people upgrading houses, I was always like, no, I, I want to, I want to do this with peace. And so that's, yeah. that's the biggest thing is as I, as I started to look to exit, I remember even people in our company, they're like, Wayne, like your, your guys is your business and you guys are doing better than so many people that are full time. Why don't you guys just go full time? And again, I was always like, you know what? I want this opportunity to be so joyful and so peaceful and so, so amazing to show people that you could literally build it the right way on the side where, you know, your faith, your family, you know, the, the things that are important to you never gobble up and overcome, you know, this this opportunity doesn't just eat away at those things where you look up and you're like, right. oh, man, you know, the whole thing is, you know, gain the whole world and lose your soul. Right. So I never right. wanted to have that type of experience because I saw that in the tech world, too. You know, being in Seattle, people making stock options, people making a lot of money. And it was kind of just keeping up yeah. with the Joneses. And, you know, I saw all these um, IT guys that I kind of was following early in my career. And then I looked and I was like, man, like they have kids, but they're never home like they're gone all during the week and you know their, their kids could play sports and they're not there to coach their kids like i want to coach my kids and so it just it goes back to like really having you know we always hear begin with the end in mind and yeah. so like i really talk about i want to design my life but i have to know what my life wants to look like in 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 fast forward so i got to see my kids older and work back and be like how do i want to show up for my kids how do i want to be around my kids how do i want to be with my wife how do i want to and then I'm going to build an income that fully supports that because, wow. you know, there's a lot of things that I get asked to do or be a part of that I just say no to. And maybe it would grow my platform or grow my influence or I could be like, you know, have a lot more followers. But honestly, like I got eight followers in my house that I need. You know, I tell people all the time, <laughs> yeah. I say, you know, I don't want to go like retrain all these men how to conquer the world when I have all these men in my house that need to grow up and leave the house fully equipped mm -hmm. as men. And they're yeah. not like, man, our dad was never home or our dad was off helping all these people. And we don't even know what to do. So, so I got to see the good, the bad and the ugly of that. And I, you know, I was never yeah. perfect, right? I had many moments where I was out of balance because let's face it, like to really build things, like there's seasons where you're out of balance, but even when we rebuilt our, our latest company, you know, we sat all our kids down and we said, hey, guys, we've had a really amazing run the last 11 years, the ones that could get it, like the older ones. And we're like, but you know what? We're rebuilding something new. And here's the vision. This is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to take because all these other families are depending on mom and dad. So it's going to be a little like we're going to be grinding, but we're going to have some reward. We're going to go do this together as a family. We're going to. So we always tried to yeah. include our kids in the vision and even. You know, my dad, whether he knew he was doing it or not, when he bought rental houses and we would go work on them and I would be cleaning and scrubbing, he was like, hey, Wayne, this yeah. is this is your college fund house. I was like, oh, he's like, and then this is our vacation house. 
Like it wasn't our vacation yeah. house that we went to. It was the house that paid for our vacations, right? <laughs> and so right. always yeah. planting vision for your kids. And that's awesome. Um, you know, when you're gonna pivot and start, I think you always gotta know what you begin with the end in mind. Yeah. It sounds like um you know, from, from your early days doing, uh, being in tech of, of the value, or I guess you kind of just knew of like the, the, the power of building teams. Cause you were even saying in, when your tech work, you were even trying to get other people doing that work. Um, so is that something that you always, uh, cause I'm just thinking of the businesses you built, like that it obviously just requires like large teams. And so like, what's your, what's your thought on that? Cause I know with a lot of entrepreneurs, like, uh, it can be easy to, um, not like relinquish control, like, or, or just yeah. knowing how to add team members or how to build a team. Um, yeah, I guess what's your thought on that versus, you yeah. know, to, to, to scale, like, especially in the health, you know, industries, like where you've just scaled, scaled the heck out of that with, uh, a, like an army essentially, um, yeah. walk us through that. Yeah. I think, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, I, I never, because maybe being around technology, I always was just like, there's always someone really smart that can figure this out. Like, I don't need to figure everything out. And so even every, every problem, I always knew that there was, if I could find the right people, the solution could work together. And most of the time it was mm -hmm. not me figuring out the problem. Mm -hmm. It was me just identifying the problem and then working to be like, okay, who, who can I find that really love this? And, and then it goes back to, you know, identifying that not everyone wants to be exactly like Wayne. I have a very unique personality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, like my, my personality that I've tried to like slow down the most is like when someone really needs me, I'm a commander and I will get it done mm -hmm. and I will, you know, stay up and I will like, I will like, you want me on your team. Like yeah. I, <laughs> I just have a force <laughs> of the energy to, but then I also know that that can over, that can blow people out of the water and that can like, like just overwhelm people with that intensity sometimes. And so I, mm -hmm. I had to learn even in my first couple of years building the team business to kind of step back and be like, Whoa, not everyone can hear my voice this way. And what if I start to really identify people that can come onto the team? And I, I, I keep drawing my hands like in a circle. And one of the, one of the analogies I always say is like, we're building a round table and everyone is welcome at the table. Cause we know every single one yeah. of you, has a skill set that we need. And the cool thing is we can keep making the table wider and wider. And it's not this narrow table where I'm at the head and I'm making yeah. all the decisions is I want to sit down and I want to scan around and be like, Hey, who's here that can solve this problem. And then who else do we need to, you know, move some chairs over that we need at the table yeah. and um, just not be in scarcity. Um, I see so many, that's, that's so, there's so many people that I think they they're not young, but they just have a young mind where they think that they have the the little edge, they have the secret, and then they don't want to share it with anyone. And, you know, they spend so much time protecting that, so much energy mm. protecting their secret, instead of pr just continuing to create and continue to share and, you know, be in an abundance. And so yeah. we've just always been like, mm -hmm. almost open source with everything that we do. And it's always paid off because we open it just creates more relationships that five years later, all of a sudden we're working with someone because we were open source that, you know, five years ago, they could have been a competitor, but five years later, now they're working with us because they're like, wow, you always just shared with us. You're always open. You know, you spoke yeah, life that's into really us. Good, man. Mm -hmm. No, that's so good. I mean, like I think of some of the most successful uh, people right now are the, like, I think of guys like Alex Hormozzi who have, you know, mentioned yeah. different times, um, you know, his whole entire business model is literally create, uh, you know, I, we, Aaron, we saw that, uh, mm -hmm. that podcast or reel or something like that with him. We've talked about it a lot of like, you know, if you want to dominate, um, an industry, then the first step when you enter into that is to find the person who's doing it best, find their best product, create that create something slightly better than that and then give it away for free. <laughs> and it's like the idea that mm -hmm. if you can add an immense amount of value to people um, in ways that are greater than anyone else is offering to do, then, then when you actually come with the ask, 
you know, they're like, of course, you know, it's that kind of model of like building that that, goodwill, building those relationships because goodwill compounds so much faster than money. Right. And so if you can build that goodwill over time, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the Zig Ziglar quote that I literally, you know, have lived by my entire life. And that's, if you help enough people get what they want, then you'll have everything you could ever want. And so, you know, I'd love to talk to that a little bit. Give us uh, some examples of how that mindset and that mentality has sort of propelled your journey to a place where now you, you, you operate your business in such a way that, you know, it doesn't require your constant attention and active involvement. I mean, you've actually accomplished the dream of own the exit that many people are reaching for the ability to live the lifestyle that you've designed, right? You could be there for your kids, be there for your family. You know, uh, you and I are talking business in the middle of the day about real estate stuff and you're taking your kid to the thing, like doing, you know, like doing all, like all of that. And it's all the time. And so talk to us a little bit about that value first mentality and how it's helped you to build uh, the lifestyle that you now live yeah i you know i kid around i I say i'm not highest compensated uber driver in seattle for my kids (laughs) because you know i do you know i design design my life around being able to take my kids to do the things that they need to do be there when they need me to talk to them and coach them up work out with them coach their teams all that stuff but but the great thing is is you know i've identified businesses that allow me to do that and it's, you know, it's, it's so great to do that. But, the, you know, I think, I think, again, goes, goes back to scarcity and just being like, understanding who you are, like knowing your identity, but not ever needing to be in the spotlight is, um, you know, I've been able to build these businesses where I've been able to identify like really talented people that have skill sets that are great leaders, and really just do my best to pour my life into them, my experience and come alongside them. And then even go down as they start recruiting people and bringing people to their team and just uplift them and, and work with them. And, and, and I always describe it as, you know, there's that old movie, um, Kevin Costner, Field of Dreams. Yeah. If, if you build it, they will come. And so, you know, I've always tried to just create an environment of success for people where, you know, I teach them, hey, if we can build this environment, we can build this field, but I'm not going to stay here. It's like, this is your field. And so I'm going to show you everything to create the structure, create the environment of success, but you're the leader. The people love you. They want to see you. And so, you know, like probably one of the the funniest in some regards, some people don't like this in, in the space, but for my wife and I is we'll meet people all the time that meet us and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm in your business too. And we're like, oh, really? That's, that's amazing. And they're like, you know, who are, who are you with? And they describe the person. They're like, oh, we're with these people. And I go, oh yeah, they're they're on our team too. And they're like, what? You're mm-hmm. they're on your team? And I and we're like, yeah. And, and they're like, so they're almost like, you know, not to our credit, but we've just we've launched people well, where it's this beautiful model where they're running autonomously their business. You know, we talk about leadership stuff, we collaborate a lot and all that stuff, but yeah, but we don't get in and micromanage and try to be like, hey, now you should be doing this and now you should be doing that. And we see that that just stifles people. And so Mm -hmm. we've always just tried to um, just deploy people, launch people. If, you know, you think of uh, eagles, mama eagles nest, like you you have them in the nest at the beginning and then then it's time for them to fly and go and and start to build it. And when you have, you know, you have a a great business that has a great offer and you can find the right people, that's how it really starts to take roots and grow rapidly. Wow. Not so good. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. So what, um, you know, what, 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 uh, I guess advice. Um, I'm just thinking, um, going back, you know, with with tech. What what? Why did you not want to build something within that, especially at that time period? You know, I'm just thinking to yourself as an entrepreneur, and you're getting people working. I'm just thinking of all the fortunes that were created, right, and lost, I guess, too. But back at that time period, you know, when you were already in that industry, and your, you know, your your dad was as well. But then you just went into something totally different. Was it the model yeah. that you liked with with that, or? Yeah, I mean, here, here's the ironic thing is I'm actually not that technologically savvy. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I got a business degree. It was in information systems. I knew enough to be dangerous. And again, I, my first job. So here's here's something that I I, w- I want to go back. Like I growing up, I was always a you know above average athlete. I had a lot of natural ability. There were some things that you know just. 
I could kind of like work my way through things. Um, and thankfully when I got to college, I was like, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to have to like change up things. I'm going to, when I go to class, I'm going to sit in the front row and I have this mission. I'm like, I'm never going to miss, no matter how I feel, I'm never going to miss a day of class. And I'm always going to sit in the front because I realized I wasn't technical. There was like, there was some of the things the guys were doing in technology that I was like, my brain is not wired to figure out these computations. And I was like, but here's what I figured out is like, I'm really good at being a bridge between these people. Those people really like me. And actually I can communicate with the other humans so I can stay in this lane and really be like yeah. the business analyst salesperson. But one of the things I did, my first job, they hired me and they said, Hey, which track do you want to do? You can do the computer programmer track, or you can go do the business analyst tester track. And I was like, the programmer track sounds like it's going to blow my brain out of the water. But I was like, you know what? I need to do hard things. Like even before people used to say yeah. that, I was like, something in me was like, you have to take the hard path at the beginning and you got to like know mm -hmm. the deep X's and O's of all this to be like, like have authority with the people that you're going to go help later. And so I did that. I didn't love it. Again, it led to all that programming, the, the Y2K stuff. I was, mm -hmm. I really wasn't good at that. That's why I recruited more people to come do it with me. But so I just started to figure out who I was and what my skill set was. And, you know, yeah. I was like, okay, if I can just identify these problems that I can get these other tech tech people to do it. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just realized I'm more of a people person. I'm just not someone that's just going to sit there and introvertedly um, knock some of these tech things out and do all that stuff. And so it's, it's just, I think for everyone to really identify, you know, what really winds your clock and, you know, whatever skill set you're gifted with, like there's tremendous value in it if you really double down on it and focus on it and create, you know, the market is demanding you to be your best of who you are, not be someone else. Wow. No, that's so good. I, I, I really resonate, you know, with um, especially what you said about, you know, choosing, you know, a lot of people think that the best way forward is to choose the path of least resistance. And I think early on in your entrepreneurial journey, and even at different stages of your entrepreneurial journey, like the best thing you can possibly do is volunteer for the path of greatest resistance, right? And, yeah. you know, right. I've been uh, recently over the last several months doing, uh, doing the ice plunges right i got one it's set up on my back deck we had the polar vortex sweep through kansas city uh you know the last set you know early on in january and uh and it was like negative three degrees and i'm going out every night you know for three minutes jumping in the ice bath and negative three degrees yeah. and and then the main reason i was doing it was one it's a total neurological reset right like it's an amazing yeah. thing it just resets the nervous system but also, it's like no matter what I did that day or had to do the next day or whatever, like nothing was going to really be harder than that. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. I was literally going to yeah. self-inflict pain for three minutes on myself, not in like a weird yeah. masochist sort of way, but like, you oh, know, absolutely. but yeah. choosing the path, intentionally cho choosing uh to place great resistance. And that's, and that's what we do when we go to the gym, right? Like we're, 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 yeah. we're intentionally creating more and more resistance so that we get stronger. And why don't we do that more in our entrepreneurial journeys, right? Put ourselves in situations where we have to get stronger and have to get better. So yeah. you know, I love that yeah, so really much. Good. So one of the things on that, you know, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, just real quick. You know, one of the things on that is, you know, if you've ever heard of a, a uh, author or a clinical psychologist, doctor, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, she talks about the brain science yeah. and the neuroplasticity of her brain. And, um, you know, one of the things in listening to her that just really discovered is, you know, our brain thought patterns become like ruts. And I was like thinking of mm -hmm. the old West wagon train going out West where these wagon trains would get in these ruts and they would just have to follow. And, you know, so many times, like you said, with the ice bath, our thought patterns are so deep in this rut where the default is to go easy. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And, you know, th these shock things, they just create like the old, it's like, it gets you that hard turn out of that rut where all of a mm. sudden you're like, hold on. I, I continue to, I continue to go down this rut, but it's like, I'm going in a circle. I'm basically yeah. failing the same test every day. So how do I shock myself 
and create a whole new pathway in my brain. And that's the, you know, the ice baths, you know, working yeah. out, doing all these different things to shake it up. So I just wanted to add that too, because I love that. No, that's so good. Yeah. That's so good. I love Dr. Caroline Leaf. I've, I've read, uh, read her, a couple of her books and listened to her, some of her stuff on YouTube and stuff. So she's awesome. So now, uh, it's, we're kind of at the end of the show, so we like to jump into the last five minutes of the show. It's what we call the exit round. When we ask everybody who comes on the show these five questions, we're excited to get your answer for these five questions. So question number one, here we go, exit round. What is your favorite all-time business, entrepreneurship, or leadership book? First, I need to know what do I win in this Exit five five question round. No, I'm kidding. Okay, those <laughs> guys that don't know me. Questions right. right. You have to get all the questions yeah. right. And I like to win. I like to win at yeah. all costs. No. <laughs> yep. All I do uh, is sometimes win. we win. Sometimes we learn. That's another book, but that's not the book. Um, but it is a John Maxwell book. Is the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And mm. I'll tell you, um, when I joined that first company, I went to a conference and John Maxwell was speaking, and I had never I. I've been a Christian, but I'd never had an altar call moment. And John Maxwell mm. was speaking and I literally like felt like my body got up. And when he was done speaking, I went to the front, like he didn't have an altar call, but I, I accepted the leadership altar call where I was like, this guy is talking about things that like are deep in my soul that are need to be uncovered. Like this is my wow. moment. And that was that first book, and I have the John Maxwell Leadership Bible, which, you know, pairs the Bible all through his leadership lessons. And, you know, it's just a great foundation for people to know how to work with people, know yourself and really um, level up your whole life. So that's that's hands down like, that book. You know, Bible and then that book. No, it's an exceptional book. I love it, too. So. All right. Question number two, um, Wayne, what percentage of your current income is fully passive? So this. This could be a trick question. If it might be a be. trick answer. So, um, so on on one hand, I always tell people like the word passive income. I think sometimes has a negative connotation of people are like kicking back and not doing anything. So I would mm -hmm. say zero percent of my income is passive from my mind. Right, mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent actively engaged with all of my income, but I would say about seventy percent of my income really requires none of my day to day, none of my activity from the real estate to, you know, the sale, you know, the marketing organizations that we have sales and marketing organizations, because there's mm -hmm. so many leaders that have been developed in there. But I will say one of the things, you know, I'm constantly doing is taking some of that income and putting it into assets, right? Continuing to put some of that income into assets that's passive now because, you know, it's tied to a business. It's tied to the economy. You know, there's always bumps. But right now, currently, it's about 70% to cut to the chase. Yeah. I kind of like the term residual income over passive income, even though we use the word passive income. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the idea is like there is no such thing as passive income, even if you had to like work to pick the right investment and analyze the right opportunity. Like that was work. That was yeah. time spent. It's just compounding you know, degrees of return, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as it, as it goes from there. So, all right. So got to check your bank account, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's active. Right. So, cool. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's one thing that you wish that you could do more of, but your business commitments hold you back? That's, that's a good one. Cause I really feel like in some respects, I've been able to design my life. You know, it's a lot of people look at my wife and I, we've had four more kids in the last um, six years and neither one of us are very young. And, and so it's, you know, it's just something that we've been able to design our life around. But I like personally, if I could go up skiing in the mountains a little bit more, I would probably double yeah. the uh, skiing output and, and, <laughs> and do that. And I probably would go surfing more in the summer, but again, that's the great thing about kids is, you know, I love to do all those things and now I get to take my kids and I get to do it with them yeah. so you know for, i i would humbly say that you know i've really been able to design design my days and design my life uh around that which is which has been pretty awesome love it sweet man okay question number four if you could go back in time um 
uh, what advice would you give to your younger self about building a business before you ever started? 18 year old Wayne. Yeah. Um, I would say I, you know, I actually was a serial quitter and I was not very committed, you know, it probably comes partially with youth, but again, um, I think sometimes when people have talent at things where they can just step on the field or step into things and excel, um, there's a little trap there. And so I had that trap of, um, you know, there was a lot of things I was really good at. And then all of a sudden I found some things that I was like, I wanted to do, but I, I was like, shoot, I need to work at this. And then I was like, ah, maybe I don't want to do it after all. So Mm -hmm. my younger self, I would say, level up your grit, level up your commitment and realize that, you know, everything you want in life is on the other side of work. You know, it's the narrow path. Like I was just Mm -hmm. talking to my, my teen kids this morning and I was like, you guys ready to pick up your machete today? And they're like, what? And I was like, the narrow path needs to be clear. Like stay off the wide path. Like every day Mm -hmm. we're like, carving your own new path. No one's going to do it for you. So you got to go, you got to go chop away. It might be chopping away things at you, but, um, so, you know, that's for me, I had to, I had to learn that because unfortunately I, you know, I quit my football team in high school and we ended up winning the state championship the next year, the last Seattle public school to win the state championship. You think my friends reminded me of that? Oh yes, they still do. Wow. You know, 32 (laughs) years later. Um, you know, so there was just these little things where God showed me, he was just like, Hey, remember when you quit that? Like you could have, like, you could have had this experience and been a part of that championship. And so I just kind of took that with me to like, it's level up, commit, show some grit and, uh, keep going. Come on. So good. Last question. Question number five. Uh, what's your strategy for creating time, freedom and financial freedom for yourself? And just feel free to share one or two strategic tips of how you've either accomplished that or how you're currently engaged in, uh, you know, strengthening that time, freedom and financial freedom for yourself and your family. Yeah, probably, you know, if I, if I was maybe just starting out or I was trying to get, get ahead again, there's a great book, the richest man in Babylon. And he just Mm. talks about this simple concept of, you know, you make 80%, you give 10%, and 10% goes to investment to create these children investments. And, and so one of the, one of the things I would say is, you know, be super diligent to live below your means. As you start to make money, don't let the lifestyle creep. Actually, instead of lifestyle creep, let your investments creep up because you'll be surprised mm-hmm. at how little time that investment creep versus lifestyle creep can actually change your whole entire future can create those passive incomes can create those assets and so just you know don't be short-sighted there's you know compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world for for a reason but also you know compound diligence and compound showing up every day it's this it's Mm. the same principle that like does amazing things and that's where we know that because we we hear it everywhere of people that are successful is, you know, the diligent, the discipline, the, you know, those, those people that can really stay focused and stick to a plan over a really long time, not be like sensational and just go crazy, but just continue to do that discipline diligence. Like you get that compound effect. And one day you look up and you're like, oh my gosh, what my life, what, what happened here? And so that's, yeah. that's the, the, the hack, which is, it's, almost so simple. It's so obvious that sometimes people don't. That's another thing. There's so many things that are so simple and so obvious that people are like, that could not possibly work. And you're like, it actually does work. Like it, Mm. it requires no sizzle. It's just grind, like just discipline, just do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. And it's, it's, it's let your yes be yes. Let your no be no, you know, So that's awesome. I love that so much. Well, Wayne, man, it's been awesome being able to have you as a special guest here on Own the Exit. And uh, we'd love for our uh, listeners and viewers to be able to have the opportunity to uh, get connected with you. And so what's the, you know, kind of the big one way that they can connect with you, uh, you know? Yeah, so our website, my wife and I, you know, what we kind of everything funnels out of is risechampions.com. So okay. if you want to go check out risechampions.com, it has our social social stuff out there and connects into everything else that we're doing. But that's kind of the, the main focus point is risechampions.com. 
Awesome. All right. So uh, you heard it from Wayne. If you want to get more connected with Wayne and uh, continue to learn from him and grow, uh, you know, with Wayne Johnson, then check out risechampions.com. Thank you all of our guests again for joining us for another episode of Own the Exit. If you enjoyed this episode and are enjoying this journey of Own the Exit, uh, it'd mean a lot to us if you would subscribe, leave us a review, and then uh, maybe share this uh, with a couple of friends who you think would enjoy listening to it. Aaron, any final words, man, before we close off this episode? No, thanks, Wayne, for sharing all this stuff. I'm going to go back and listen to this again as you unpacked, you know, decades of wisdom there on building multiple businesses and all that. And I think that's really applicable to us as entrepreneurs. You know, we're all at different stages of the journey. And so um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, see you next time. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for listening to Own the Exit. <laughs>